not going to get left behind. This is what happened. The first Don't be a dumbass and ask Jack What makes these shorts so interesting and why do they have such high view counts? were the questions that haunted me over my six years as a video editor. But after editing so many shorts, I finally discovered the secret to it. You see, there's a blueprint out there that contains a list of specific secrets. And if you follow them just right, you're gonna be able to create viral engaging shorts every time. And it just so happens that creators like Ali Abdal, Nat Jongsala, Devin Jatho, or Houston Gold all follow the same exact blueprint. Which is why in this video, I'm taking on the task of repurposing this boring short over here into this viral and engaging edit right over here. And in the process of doing so, I'll be teaching you the five-step blueprint that you can use to create viral engaging shorts. So without further ado, let's dive straight into it. The script is the backbone on which the whole short relies on. Meaning if you get this one part correct, you are one step closer to going viral. Now the first thing you must understand in scripting is that the video is split into three main parts. You have the hook, the body and the CTA or call to action. Now the hook is responsible for capturing your viewers interest so that they stop scrolling and watch your video, which is why the hook must be captivated. And the body is responsible for maintaining your viewers engagement since they will constantly be getting bored, which is why your body should be entertained. And your CTA is responsible for asking your viewers to become followers or telling them about a product you have. Now my video was going to be about five sound effects that I wanted to mention and talk about. So naturally, I started by writing out a captivating hook. Now to make the hook captivating, you could do two things. Either make a controversial negative claim or make an unbelievably good claim. In my case, I decided to go with the second option and this was my hook. So the next time you want to sound design your video, here are five sound effects that you should be using to go well. I gave my viewer a reason to watch through the whole video by telling them about the fifth dip, which was at the end of the video. And with my hook out of the way, I then scripted the rest of the body, which ended up being me writing out five different sound effects, explaining them in two sentences each. And I finished off the whole script by looping it with the intro. And with this script finally finished, Finished, it was time to record. So I set up my lighting, placed my camera, and got to work. I usually use Streamlabs OBS or Audacity to record my mic or screen and just record the video of me speaking with my camera. But now that the scripting and recording is finished, we can finally move on to editing our video. And the first thing I had to do is my rough cuts and pacing. The first step of editing any short is to remove the silences and bad takes. And to do this, all I had to do was drag in my footage, use my razor tool to cut right after I stopped talking, and made another cut before I started talking. Then selected the gap in between and clicked backspace to delete. And then I just did this for the whole entire short. As for pacing, the concept here is to make the clips flow a lot smoother into each other and basically deliver the information to the viewer a lot faster. To do this, we create what I like to call J cuts. All you gotta do is overlap the second clip a tiny bit, drag your video back a bit, and just make Make sure the second audio starts as the first one is ending. I've explained this like a million times now. Then just do this for the whole entire video. And with this out of the way, you will now have a timeline that's clean cut and ready for our edit. And I've also said this sentence like a thousand times. Now that we can dive into the editing side of things, let's get started with our hook and bridge. Now remember, the hook must be captivating for the viewer. So we'll be focusing all our editing energy into this one section right here. We'll use animations, texts, glows, memes, you name it. And by the way, you can find all the presets and plugins used in this video inside of my community. As for our short over here, here's the hook and bridge that we're gonna be editing. Next time you wanna sound design your video, here are five sound effects that you should be using to go viral. And the fifth effect is one that I use a lot. The first, I add a text preset I made a while back and add a pop-up preset to it. Then, subtitle the words here and R. Then I nest it and add some VR glow. And for the section where I mentioned five sound effects, I really wanted to visualize the sound effects. So I added the glowing text preset and wrote out the five. Next, I wanted to create this sound effect the graphic animation reveal thing. So I added this rectangle graphic animation, rounded off the corners and nested the whole thing. Then, added an adjustment layer, added a lumetri color effect, masked it out like a background to the rectangle. Then I grabbed the sound animation gif from Google, added it into the rectangle, and added a glow to it. Next, I added the glow to the rectangle and this is the animation I ended up with. Now I wanted it to look like I was flicking through the different sound effects that we have, so I added a text preset and wrote out all the different sound effects options that I talk about in the video. And added a transform effect, increased my shutter angle, and animated a movement from the first sound effect till the last one. Then nested the whole thing, and added a mask so that the text only appear in this circle. And this Here was the final sound result. Effects that you should be using to go viral. And lastly, to visualize the word viral, I imported a video of an arrow increasing, then imported a text saying viral, and tracked it to the arrow. Nested the whole thing, and made it slide from the bottom into the middle of the screen. Oh, and one more thing. I finished it off by tracking my face in this bridge section over here. And with all this finished, we now have a fully edited hook and bridge that looks like this. So here are five sound effects that you should be using to go viral. And the fifth effect is one that I use a lot. Let 
me ask you this. What would you categorize yourself as an editor? Are you a beginner, intermediate, or a professional? Are you someone that wants to learn video editing but doesn't know where to start? Or someone that wants to master engaging video editing styles? Or someone that wants to learn the secrets to growing a YouTube channel? Well, we have an online video editing community that is turning beginners like you into professional editors. And people are landing clients that pay $3,000 within a few months of joining. And how exactly do we pull this off? To keep it short, the first stage is mastering video editing, which is where we go through 50 courses to learn the basics of Premiere Pro and the advanced editing techniques Techniques you will need to know to edit like the big creators. Then the next step is to teach you high-end editing styles that will make you stand out as an editor, which is where you can dive into three different short-form editing styles. Then you can master long-form editing by diving into these two masterclasses, the Isaac editing style and my own editing style where you will learn to edit videos like me. And at this point, our final step is to teach you the secrets to growing fast on YouTube just like I did. To do this, we go through the YouTube growth masterclass, a 50 course masterclass where I share the secrets of growing a channel on YouTube, and you'll also learn how to create amazing thumbnails using our 30 course Photoshop masterclass. On top of that, you'll get weekly Q&A calls with me, online lessons, presets and plugins that I use to edit these videos, and a lot more. The best part is this whole thing costs less than a single trip to the grocery store. So go ahead and click the link down below where you can watch a quick video that tells you everything about Ultimate Editors and join the best online video editing community out there. With the hook and bridge section both fully edited, it was time to edit the rest of the video. Now this is gonna be the most time consuming part because we're gonna have to keep using a variation of images, texts, and animation to keep our viewers engaged. So let's go ahead and get started on sound effect number one. The first sound effect is textured sound effects. Clicks, keyboards, highlighters can all be used to add life to any clip that they are added. First, I'm gonna create an animation for when I reveal the sound effect since I've got five different sound effects. I'll just create a really good animation once and then keep reusing it for the other four. I start by adding text and typing out number one and resizing it. Then I had a slide from bottom preset. I then duplicated the sound animation we made a while back, then added my glowing text preset, changed the color of the text to the color of the glow, and played with the glow settings. Then I duplicated and delayed the second text, and I made the main text the name of my sound effect. And the second text will just say sound effect. Added a slide from bottom to both of them, then added this adjustment layer, darkened it, added a grid, and this is the sound effect reveal animation that we ended up with. Now I'm going to be able to duplicate this for the rest of the sound effects which is gonna save me a lot of time. As for sound effect number one, I start off by mentioning clicks, keyboards, and highlighters. So I added a clip of me clicking a mouse, a clip of me typing, a clip of a pencil drawing, and I overlaid them with an LCD overlay from Motion Pro. Then to show the sound effect being added, I added a screenshot of a timeline in Premiere Pro, then added a screenshot of a sound effect, nested it, added some glow to it, and then added a transformation effect to it. Animated it popping up like this, and animated the opacity slowly revealing it to get this effect. Then I nested the whole thing with the background and added the transform effect and animated a camera panning from the timeline to this sound effect. And for this last section in sound effect number one, I wanted to show what it looks like with and without color grading. So I added an adjustment layer, color graded it and masked it across the screen like this. Then I keyframed the masking to move and reveal the original clip. And with all this done, this is what we end up with for sound effect number one. First sound effect is textured sound effects. Clicks, keyboards, highlighters can all be used to add life to any clip that they are added to. It's kind of like color grading, but for audio. Moving on to sound effect number two, this is what we have to work with. The second sound effect is whoosh sound effects. And these sound effects basically make your animation pop. Just make sure to add them to the point with the most blur and you're good to go. When I mentioned the sound effect, you guessed it. We're gonna duplicate the sound effect reveal animation we made and just change the number and the name of the sound effect. Done. Then I literally wanted to show the animations popping. So I added a screenshot of the timeline, made it unsaturated, masked out a clip from the middle, then added an adjustment layer with a vignette, then imported this arrow animation, nested it, added a VR glow to it, then added some text on top of our clip. Then using the transform effect, I create a pop-up animation, nest the text, and mask it out from behind the clip. Lastly, nest the whole thing together and top it off with a zoom in. But to show the clip popping out, I imported an explosion, removed the green screen, and resized it on top of the clip. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you transition into the next scene, in which I added a screenshot of the first scene, added a screenshot of the effect controls panel with some keyframes, I created the background by adding a rectangle and mimicking the color of the Premiere Pro UI, once again reusing that arrow animation with the glow, and to finish it off, nest the whole thing together and animate a movement from the scene to the effect control panel. And this is how our sound effect number two ended up looking. The second sound effect is whoosh sound effects. 
and these sound effects basically make your animation pop up. Just make sure to add them to the point with the most blur and you get to As you see, the trick is to keep the viewer engaged in the video by using new elements. And sound effect number three was no exception to this. As usual, when I mention the tip, duplicate the animation, change the number, and the name of the sound effect. For this section, I simply decided to word everything out. So I added my text presets, slide a pop-up to it, then subtitled the words, and if you ever wanted. Make sure to end each text with a slide in a different direction as well. Then added a glowing text, wrote out build up emotion. Then as I mentioned the second tip, I animated the first text so that it moves a bit and reveals the second text. Then added the second text and wrote out suspenseful moment. I then added a Gaussian blur to the first text as the second text was gonna come in. And lastly animated my second text popping down from behind my first one. And that's it for sound effect number three. That was a quick one. If you ever wanted to build up emotion or have a suspenseful moment, this is what you're gonna do. Our next clip to edit was this. Fourth R meme sound effects. I mean, you gotta keep your video entertaining, so don't forget to add in your humorous twist. Now, as usual, duplicate the animation for the sound effect, change the number and the sound effect name. Then, to show my point, I decided to import a picture of a timeline and just do some cool 3D effects. So I masked out the timeline and added a cool glow, then added a basic 3D effect. Then let's animate a basic tilt and swivel rotation like so, then keyframe the the distance of the image starting at a far point and then moving closer. Make sure to top it off with a slide from bottom at the beginning and a slide to bottom at the end. Then I wanted to show some people laughing, so I gathered a whole bunch of gifs of people laughing and placed them right after each other on the timeline. Nested the whole thing and overlaid it with an LCD overlay once again. And ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you sound effect number four. And you gotta keep your video entertaining, so don't forget to add in your humorous twist. All right, look, I get it. You're bored, you wanna click off. I totally understand, but we just got one more tip, one more sound effect. Okay? Promise you, I'll make it, I'll make this one quick. Here's our last sound effect. This is sound effect number five. And lastly, the fifth sound effect is digital sound effects. These just work so seamlessly with animations and they bring these kinds of animations to life. Once again, duplicate the animation, change the number, blah, 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 you, you get it. Now check out this sick animation. I added a screenshot of my timeline. I then added a rectangle and changed its color to the same color of the Premiere UI. And now here is where it gets a bit tricky. I duplicated my screenshot and masked out the clips, then duplicated it again and masked out a different clip. Then lastly, one more. And then I added a slide animation on each one of those three screenshots so that we can get this animation. Then I imported a screenshot of a sound effect, nested it, and added some glow. Copied my transform pop-up effect, duplicated it three times, and placed them like so. Lastly, just nest the whole thing and add a transform effect and pan the camera from the timeline over to the sound effects. And that's it for sound effect number five. Ladies and gentlemen, sound effect number five. These just work so seamlessly with animations and they bring these kinds of animations to life. All right, well, remember how I mentioned that this was gonna be the final step and we're finished? Yeah, that's not exactly true. Realistically, we're only like 50% of the way. We still have to sound design the entire thing. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Also check out Ultimate Editor. So.